Today's video, MGTOW in my case, part 3. I haven't got into full detail yet what my ex has done. I have many video footages of her behavior as well, with text messages and her goodbye letter where it's just basically a full confession letter. I have everything to prove her guilt. The police know that she's completely guilty. But for two years, eight months, and 26 days, they refused to listen to me. After making three different appeals, they finally listened to me. On the 6th of January, I finally go to court. There is a slight problem. I'm completely mentally exhausted. Not that that would really stop me on the 6th. I'll have new reju rejuvenated energy for that, of course. But right now, it's just making my head super tired. Or I can't sleep. I've been through a lot of stuff in my life, but never has anything come by that gave me post-traumatic stress disorder for 23 months. Maybe you all don't really understand what post-traumatic stress disorder is, so I'd like to talk about it a little bit. It's like when you get stuck in a moment in time because something shocked you so bad, something upset you so much that your brain couldn't actually handle what was happening. That happened to me. I got stuck in the moment of time for 23 agonizing months. All I would talk about is the moment in time. All I cared about was my case. I was completely obsessed. Everybody called me obsessed. And like a raging beast, I went out looking for every bit of evidence that I could. So I went completely insane for a while, just trying to get the evidence I could against my ex. Plus the police throwing my case on the shelf like it meant nothing for seven months while still continuing to call me a rapist. Despite having the evidence that clearly proved that I was not guilty of rape, they didn't care. They still called me a rapist for seven months. They still treated me like a rapist for seven months. I made a police report about that too, calling them very bad police officers. There was a full investigation and uh, the conclusion was that the officer was reprimanded because he said some words that he was not allowed to say while he was in my house. It, w it was out of her uh, jurisdiction. So anyways, on the 6th of January, I finally go to court. I'm exhausted. I don't know where to start. I mean, I got a clue. I just got to get it all together in my head. So wish me luck on the 6th, you guys. I mean, I really need some luck on that day because I'm just... Like, luck, because I'm just really tired. I'm afraid I might forget something. It's so much detail to remember. I understand what Universal Studios 13 is going through. I mean, I really do. Minus the kids, of course, but the rest I understand. He must be going to living hell today, too. It's Christmas, and it's been pretty tough on him, I bet. Yeah, I didn't actually speak to him today. He left me a message, and that was uh, on, on YouTube, and then I replied shortly because I was still tired. I haven't spoken him since. I hope he's all right. <sighs> so anyways, on the 6th, I go to court. And uh, today, I'm pretty much not able to sleep. You know, I, I mean, I had such bad PTSD for 23 months that I was stuck in the moment. But for the last nine months, I've no longer been stuck. But the problem is, I still have the nightmares. I still have the mental problems that she gave me. I still have trust issues. I mean, I still have issues just talking to people. I still have a lot of issues because she really tried to screw up with my head. And the problem with the psychopath is while they're doing the behavior, you don't want to believe that they're actually that evil. You, you don't see what you see, even though you should have seen what you've seen. It's hard to explain. They have a way of always making people look like they're the bad people while they themselves are the bad people. On the night of New Year's Eve, 2012, she came home from bringing her brother back to his own house. It was a four-hour train journey. When she came back to my house, it was roughly 9 o'clock. Around 9 p.m., 9.10 p.m., she went upstairs and laid on the bed. Two minutes later, she was out cold sleeping. Just two minutes. It was so quickly that she fell asleep that I actually noticed it and thought it looked kind of fake. Because nobody falls asleep within two minutes. Just a few minutes later, I hear her mumbling in her sleep saying, Help me! Help me! Help me! And I wake her up. I shake her. I say, What's the matter? Wake up. And she started 
bugging out, flipping out, saying that she had a dream that this black spirit was chasing her through the train, and I was in the train sitting there with her. But I was in one of these cabins where the door could slide open and close, and she was banging on the door and she couldn't get in, and this black entity caught up with her. Well, from that moment on, huh, everything turned to hell, seriously. She told me she was demonically possessed, she attacked me, and then talked about it in full detail in her diary, which I now possess. Her diary is filled of testimonies of her behavior. Yet, even today, she acts like the victim. So let me show you how insane this woman is. She attacks me, then uses my body while I'm out cold for sex. Leaves a full confession letter and runs away. When I press charges against her, she rushes to the police and calls me a rapist. From there on on, she's made several charges of slander, domestic abuse, and everything else you could think of against me, and I have defeated all of her charges. The police have pictures of me and her in Skype conversations together while she's begging me to rape her and I'm refusing. Yet, she calls me the rapist. So, she's using my body for sex while I'm out cold after she pushed me down the staircase. And I'm the rapist. Mmm, okay. Anyway, she leaves a goodbye letter apologizing for what she's done. Tells me that I was really great for her and everything like that. I was a really good guy and all this stuff. And that I can be her friend and blah 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 after living with me for, uh, for a long time. So then, um... I'm now the rapist, which is complete insanity. She leaves a confession letter of what she did, then not even two days later she turns it around and I'm the mortal enemy of hers. I'm the bad guy here. So even though my body is completely covered from head, and toe, head to toe in bruises, and I'm barely able to stand due to being pushed on the staircase, and I have a severe, uh, what do you call that, when your brain gets shooken up in your head, I had memory loss. I had amnesia until the 19th of April, 2012. I had amnesia for 11 days. And in those 11 days, I didn't know what the hell was happening to me. I had no idea until I got up top, on top of the staircase and I was about ready to go down and I had a flashback to when she pushed me down the staircase. This is when I finally pressed charges, because now I was finally able to put two and two together. You see, the moment I woke up from being pushed on the staircase, I woke up, said good morning, because I didn't know what was going on, and she flew into an instant attack rage. And I didn't understand what was going on. I'm like, why are you fighting? Why are you doing this? What the hell's the matter with you? What's going on here? My dog's growling at her and bitter. The narcissist does something really disgusting. When that, at the end of their relationship, you can ask anybody who's been a victim of narcissistic abuse, ask Universal Studios 13, for example. Whenever a narcissist abuse somebody, at the end of the relationship, they love to rewind the entire relationship for you. They really go from that day that they're in to the very first day you met, and they complain about everything that was in between, like they held everything back. It's like a giant rewind of the entire relationship until you get down to nothing. That, that's when they leave. So after they try to emotionally completely destroy you, that's when they leave. I still have nightmares. Really bad nightmares. They're not of her attacking me or anything like that, but they are um, me being in a mall, and I get a phone call from her to come find, me, find her, and every time I think I found her location, I get another text message on my phone saying, I'm not there anymore, I'm in Africa. So I take a plane to go to Africa, and then she says, I'm in America. I take a plane to get to America. And, uh, and the whole night, I'm like in this dream of traveling back and forth to find her for some reason. And when I finally find her, that's when she attacks me. I'm tired of that dream, I'm fed up with it, and I have many more dreams like that. And on the 6th of January, I'm going to make full, detailed complaint about her. A judge has personally invited me to come down to the courthouse. That doesn't happen very often. Usually you talk to the DA system. You talk to your lawyer who talks to the DA, and his system will decide whether or not you prosecute or go any further with your case. This time a judge has personally invited me.